I'm going to toss it over to Christian and he'll take us away. Thanks, Taylor. Hello, everyone. Um, good to see you. And uh, welcome to this session on digital data collection and dashboards. Um, this session came about based on the survey that you filled in some time back about um, topics that would be interesting to hear more about. Um, and this one was one of the more requested ones. Um, so that's why we've put this together. And the aim of this session is to introduce you to digital data collection and dashboards, including some examples from UNICEF, and to introduce you to some of the sort of main technology options that are available to you, at least the ones that are mainly used um, within UNICEF and within the WASH sector. So just to give you a bit of background on myself in relation to this topic. So I've worked in WASH for about 13 years um, and I've directly managed around 40 million of, uh, dollars of WASH programs, each of which needed to have monitoring systems in place. Um, and many of them, particularly sort of more recently, um, have utilized digital data collection systems and dashboards. Um, so most of the systems we'll cover today I've used and set up at some point, but I'm nowhere near an expert in them. Um, I've also worked in a sort of a donor role as a WASH advisor to a hundred million dollar fund. Um, so that included sort of reviewing proposals, reviewing monitoring systems, and then helping partners to get their monitoring systems up and running. So I'm not an expert on this topic. Um, I'm not an information management specialist. Um, but I have used most of the systems that you'll hear about today, so I can at least share some sort of personal experience as how it was as a non-specialist trying to get to grips with some of these things, um, having not used them before. OK, so but if we go more advanced later on, we'll bring in experts if needed, as needed. So, But I can give you my perspective of how easy or difficult I found them um, and how they compared to to each other. So just to kind of um, recap what we've done already. Um, so we did the theory of change and you've all done those. And we did a, a webinar on monitoring and monitoring impact where we introduced the, the monitoring framework or the log frame. So I don't know if any of you have started to fill that out yet, um, but hopefully you've at least started to think about it because it will start to highlight where maybe some of your gaps are. Um, both in terms of sort of the data you have right now and what monitoring systems you'd like to have in the future. So then what would be, you know, if we were setting up a, a WASH program now, what would be our what would be our next step? Like where do we go next from the monitoring framework in order to get to these digital systems and dashboards? Well, there is still another kind of preparation step to do um, before we jump into the digital systems. And that's to create the tools or the forms that are going to be used. So for example, that might be the actual survey questions or the, 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 the form that's going to be used. We normally do this in, in Word or Excel um, before jumping into the other systems, just because it's easier to work collaboratively. It's easier to make changes quickly and edits and to see it sort of on one page. So, you know, when you finish your monitoring framework, you might look at it and think there is there is too much to monitor there. That is that is too many indicators and too many tools. If that's the case, the first thing, um, see if you can refine it. So perhaps two tools could be combined into one. If you can't reduce it, then make sure that you focus on, on what matters most in your theory of change or to your social business model. OK, so now onto the newer stuff. So once we have our forms or our tools designed, that's when we can start thinking about and planning what systems might be most appropriate for us to collect the data, store the data, and visualize today the data. And today that's kind of the three categories how I'm gonna split it out. So traditionally, you know, we will use paper forms to collect our data. We'll put it in Excel, and then we'll use that to create reports in Word and graphs in Excel. And that system is, is perfectly fine for collecting and analyzing data in, in many cases, but it does have limitations. So on the data side, paper forms can be more prone to mistakes 
because people can write the wrong thing. Um, there can also be mistakes when you have to go and put it into Excel, which is also a time consuming exercise. On the reporting side, the, the main limitation is typically just the time it takes to get from data collection to publishing a report. You know, within most WASH organizations, it's, it's many months from when you actually collect the data on paper to get a report out that others can use, even colleagues. So the digital systems can help with, with both of these challenges, but it, we're definitely not saying that everybody should go digital. So it, here's a selection of a lot of logos of some of the most common technologies that are used um, by WASH programs in UNICEF and in the sector. And we'll go through some of these shortly. Um, just as a disclaimer, of course, UNICEF does not promote any particular software for you to use. And even within UNICEF, different technologies and software are used by different teams, depending on their needs. Um, but before we sort of go into some of the technology options, one sort of key piece for advice, never start at the form. <laughs> when you start at the form, rather than starting at the theory of change or the log frame, you end up with way too many questions, questions that you later find you didn't really need to ask. Maybe you're going to create your dashboard and you think, oh, we're missing key questions. We can't actually create that graph that we wanted. I don't know if anyone's done this before, but I think anyone working in WASH programs has done this at some point. You jump straight into the form, you think about everything that would be interesting to know, and you end up with a lot of data, but it's not always exactly what you actually needed to monitor what's most important. So this is just a reminder to, of why we have this kind of process flow, because the theory of change and the log frame, that's what tells us what should be on the dashboards. You know, that's telling us what matters most and what we want to see. Like, for example, in, in the last webinar, we heard from Jakuma at Toilet Pride. So he might have in his monitoring framework that he wants to monitor toilet sales and he wants to disaggregate that by location and household income type. So that's exactly what his dashboard is going to show. He's going to be able to filter by location, by income type, and he's going to be able to see toilet sales. So it's already defined way before we even get to thinking about what technology we're going to use. Okay, so I just want to introduce you to some of the options available for data collection, digital data collection. So how you can collect data digitally rather than on paper forms. And there are so many tools available. If you Google it, you will find, I'm sure, over 100 different companies that offer this type of service in all with various different features. Um, many of them are actually based on the same underlying platform. So they're different commercializations of a similar thing. Um, but the ones I wanna focus on today are firstly, Kobo Toolbox. Has anyone heard of that before? Like put up a hand or something. Okay. So this is probably that like the number one app used for mobile data collection in the WASH sector. It was developed, I think, by Harvard, primarily or initially for humanitarian situations, um, but also more broadly, and it can be used for free um, by anyone up to, a uh, I think, 10,000 forms a month, which is huge. Um, it can also connect to other things, so it can connect to Google Sheets or Micro. Microsoft Excel. Um, MWAT is kind of famous within the WASH sector, and it's particularly good if you're kind of mapping infrastructure like toilets, hand pumps. Um, it's good because it's it's kind of like an, a database of where things are and whether they're working. But for your types of programs, it's probably uh, not appropriate. Google Forms, has anyone used that? A few people maybe. We sometimes send you surveys through through Google Forms um, when they're short surveys or quick surveys because it's the it's the quickest and easiest thing to put together. Um, it's free, of course, um, but the key limitation for our programs is that it has no offline functionality. So if you're filling in data from offices that's maybe come in on paper, that's fine. 
But if you actually want people out there in the field filling out data in mobile devices, this can be a key limitation because you need like a connection at all times. Then there are sort of many, many commercializations of these free ones, many commercializations of things similar to Kobo Toolbox. Uh, do forms and survey CTO are two that I've used at some point. Um, and they vary in price between 10 to hundreds of dollars a month, depending on what their functionality is. So I think most of you have seen Google Forms. We won't go through it now. And this is what Kobo looks like. I think for most people, Kobo is something that can be reasonably easy to learn. Like it's quite intuitive. It's free to set up an account. And it's, it's fairly intuitive in terms of the icons and how it walks you through adding questions. But my advice would be is start with the easiest one to use and then move to the next option only if there are limitations that will affect you now or in the medium term. So that means if you, if you can always work online, consider Google. If you need offline forms, See if Kobo can do everything that you need. And only if there's some sort of key functionality that these things don't offer, then you can go out to look at the many, many alternative options. But these are good starting points for your research to think about what might be right for you. So in the past, when I worked with a, a social enterprise, actually, we used do forms because we needed um, branding, because this was going to be used by others and we were paying others others were paying us to use it so we couldn't use Kobo toolbox branding so we used do forms which is nearly the same and we had it completely branded to our organization um, survey CTO we had to use in one case where we needed to be able to update the status of something so we were taking complaints and we wanted to be able to update the status of that complaint because bear in mind that most of these systems they're just like digital paper it's a one-way track. You fill it out and it goes, it's like posting it in a, in a letterbox. Um, but some of the more expensive systems can act a bit more like a complex database. And I just want to introduce something now, but we're not going to go through it in detail, just so you know that it exists when you're thinking about your options. And that's something called Textit. And there are other commercial options. Most of these are based on a software called Rapid Pro, which was actually developed by UNICEF. So it's an open source kind of software that others like Textit have taken and turned into a, a product that can be sold. Um, and the way it works, it's all text message based. So if you're working in areas where you want to interact with your customers, but it's not realistic, they're going to download apps or go to online survey forms. This is like automated texting. So you can send things, you can automate to send a text message, say after six months that someone purchases something to check, are they still happy? Do they need a replacement part? Maybe you can send automated referral discount codes, or you could even do small surveys through text message, as long as you have the phone numbers of your customers or the people that you want to interact with. So this is out there and it, it, it is offered in, in most countries of the world. Um, the prices vary, so I couldn't put anything here because it varies a lot depending on the mobile networks in your country, but it is an option. So if you're looking for something like that. Taylor, I'm not able to check the chat. So if there's anything that like comes up, could you let me know? Is that okay? Cool. Okay. And just briefly, while sort of mentioning customer databases, this is not something we are covering today because it's not something that we use within UNICEF or WASH programs. Well, you, not UNICEF WASH programs, but just to introduce you to CRM systems, so customer relationship management systems, um, of which Salesforce is probably the biggest and most well known. So these are great for creating, if you have a lot of customers and you want to create a customer database, these can do things like track all your interaction with your customers. 
they can be linked to marketing. So you can automate emails or text messages or other interactions with your customers. And when you, you know, click on that customer, you can see every interaction they've had with you. If you have an online shop, you can see what they bought, when they bought it, what emails they got, how they responded, did they open it? So these can be really powerful and expensive and are most valuable um, you know, when you have a lot of customers and you're interacting with most of those through digital channels, which can be automated. One of these that I put up, these are just some examples. They're not um, sort of suggestions. One of them I put up here was a free one, but mostly they're like $25 to $50 a month. So they're quite expensive per user. I mean, you can also create your own mini customer relationship management system using Excel or some of the other tools that are here. So like moving on to, to data storage, like I imagine that mostly everyone's using Excel or Sheets at the moment. And there are others. I mean, if you use, say, Kobo Toolbox to collect your data, you have the option for Kobo Toolbox to collect to sort of hold that data in its data storage. So the data can be managed there. And they even have their own sort of basic visualization. So you can see basic graphs and and water you'll see is the same. So some of these options incorporate all three steps of collection, storage, and visualization. But others are separate. So you see like in the, in the Google ecosystem, you have forms to collect the data, sheets to hold it, and then Google Data Studio to visualize it. And in the case of Google, of course, it all works together seamlessly. But it's not always a good thing to have like all the steps in one program, like let's say Cobalt Toolbox, because that means that your data is only accessible there, which is not always very convenient. If you want to share a table with someone, if you want to look at a gate at, at sort of a data table, if you want to do a quick chart or a quick graph, you've got to download it from the system. And then you've got a separate file that isn't updating anymore. So that's not always a good thing. For most people, um, and for me as well, I prefer to have the data stored in some sort of spreadsheet, so either Excel or Google Sheets. So that means if, we, if we're setting up a system with Kobo Toolbox, we use it to collect the data, but then we automatically push it into a spreadsheet. And getting data between these systems, sometimes it's fully automated like Google and simple, but other times, there is no, no automation and you have to manually download data from one and upload it to another. And I've seen that on, on several WASH programs where they've selected different pieces of software that don't automatically talk to each other. And it removes that kind of automation, which is why we went there in the first place. So finding kind of an ecosystem that works together at the start is, is, is important. Where are we going? Okay. And then on, on data visualization, again, there are so many, if you Google it, there are so many different options, particularly for kind of business KPIs as well. But the three main ones that I want to introduce you to are the three ones that are used in, in UNICEF WASH. Um, and in fact, UNICEF is using all three of these in different places for, for different reasons. So the first one is Google Data Studio, um, which is great because it's free. You can, like all Google products, you can collaborate with others. Um, you can make your dashboards private or public. Um, but it's not as powerful as the other options on this slide. But for most use cases, you'll be able to find all your sort of basic charts within Google Data Studio. The Microsoft option is Microsoft Power BI, and it has more sort of options available. It is more powerful, um, but the free version um, is really only intended for individuals and it makes it difficult to share your dashboards. You can share them if you make them public for everybody or anybody to find on the web, which may not be ideal for your internal sort of data. And Tableau is the same. It's another one with sort of more powerful visualizations um, and they have a free version, but again, it has to be publicly available. And if you pay for it, it's like, I think $70 a month. So like with the other ones, for most people, Google is sufficient and has lots of advantages. It's also the easiest to use. 
Um, but if for any reason you need particularly complex features, like sort of more advanced mapping or more complex visuals, then you would need to start looking at some other alternatives. So let's just look quickly at some of the, sort of the most common combinations used in WASH programs. So this is number one, kind of the Google model. So it's the Google Forms to Google Sheets to Google Data Studio. And if you need offline data collection, Kobo Toolbox instead, and then linking Kobo Toolbox into Sheets. The second model is the sort of the Microsoft model, where again, Google Forms or Kobo is typically used, but then it goes into Excel and then into Power BI. And then finally, there's another option, which some of the wash clusters use where they want to use Tableau. Okay. I saw some chats come in. So Thomas is sold on Google Data, Data Studio, uses it all the time. Chris from Abundant Water um, is saying that he's used Power Buy. And it works pretty well to visualize data. Yeah, yeah I agree, Chris. Like Power BI is pretty powerful once you get the hang of it. Um, but I, I found it a steeper learning curve than Google. I found Google more sort of um, intuitive, I guess. We have a couple of examples from within UNICEF. So the first one is from where I am now, from Panama, from the Latin America in the Caribbean office. So we're gonna hear briefly from Victor, and he is the information management officer for WASH for the region, for the whole region. So he does regional data collection and visualization and also supports the countries. And this is the model that, that he has selected for this region. So he uses the Google, the Google model. So I'm gonna try and play this video and see what happens. Let me know if the sound or anything doesn't work. Thank you. ...with our innovators. Um, tell us a bit about what you do in UNICEF and how that involves uh, data. Okay, thank you, Christian, for the interview. Well, my name is Victor Nakane. I'm actually working on the Latin American and the Caribbean Regional Office here. Oh, I think it froze, Christian. Yeah. How did you fix it earlier, Taylor? Was there any secrets? Also based in Panama, and I'm also working the WASH section as an information management officer and for for all the the the, the office and also uh, for the wash lab group that is the water sanitation hygiene uh, regional uh, latin american and caribbean sector group great so could you give us an example of how you use um, digital data collection and dashboards for your work? And perhaps you could even share your screen and show us one of the, the dashboards that you use. Um, yes, sure. Well, uh, as an information management officer, uh, and it's our, on our daily basis uh, to, to work with data, um, to do analysis and also to do uh, some how to visualize all that data also collected. Um, basically, um, we have data that is um, collected by uh, for original WASHLAC group, um, some data that is at national national level, and, and in other terms, um, I also support national platform coordinations in the region to do dashboards and data analysis for emergencies. So um, I have to, <laughs> to, to, to types of fields. Um, in regarding the emergencies, I have done uh, data analysis for emergencies response, um, the famous uh, 345Ws, and uh, in other instance, also assessments 
uh, data dashboards also. And if I can, uh, let me open to see one example. So you of... support all the, the UNICEF offices in the region with their data collection for, for emergencies? Yes, yes. Here in the region, um, the regional watchlag group um, is actually uh, uh, one of his, his um, indicators in our work plan is to um, strengthen the capacity on coordination and information management and for each national coordination platform that, well, um, here in the region, all the offices of UNICEF offices um, are the leaders of, of the emergency sector of, of WASH also. Okay, here, uh, this is our WASHLAC uh, group site. Uh, we, well, we work in four languages. And well, for here, for this uh, interview, uh, we are going to join the dashboard um, site. And I have different types of dashboards that were, are embedded here in the, in the, in the site. So for example, um, um, this dashboard is, uh, uh, is, is our updates in, in the activities that we do at, as a regional watchlag group. Uh, let me open. And it's run with the Google Data Studio. So we can see here all the people reach um, the outputs uh, the, in terms of meetings, trainings, documents, and tools and how many countries we are supporting right now with, uh, with, uh, with the color heat map. So, um, so yes, uh, in terms, um, there are measures measure in terms of coordination and information management. Uh, and down here we can see, I don't know, he's too small, <laughs> sorry for that. Let me zoom, out, zoom in. Yeah, yes, this is the, or, or dashboard of of um, activities that we do, um, and well, the, the, how we collect this data is uh, with Google Forms. We uh, every week, every two weeks, we uh, the team um, insert all their or their in, uh, outputs in terms of numbers and people rich and in the area that that we are working. That's great. So the your the UNICEF offices in the region, do they enter the data in Google Forms on the phone or Google Phones on their web browser? Um, well, here uh, is directly from the web browser. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for this, um, for this particular system for tracking the people reached by, by UNICEF for WASH, why did you choose to set up this digital system? Like, and what are the benefits over like what you had before? Like, how did it work before there were these dashboards and mm -hmm. and, and Google Forms? Yes, well, we are running uh, with the Google Enterprise uh, all the applications. Um, this is actually uh, connected with a Google spreadsheet that uh, works like a database from the Google Forms that we fill uh, manually. So we fill in the forms, we fill manually all the activities that we have done and then go to the database. And when then we, uh, well, I, I developed this dashboard um, in Google Data Studio to do all the different anal analysis. So, and we picked uh, Google because it's free. Um, is and it's very easy also to 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 play with the numbers to create different type of analysis, and in terms of um, doing uh, the maps at national level, also it's very easy. Great. Mm -hmm. So, for our innovators that haven't worked with, perhaps haven't worked with digital data collection or dashboards before, is this something that they could? could learn to do like how difficult is it to to make um, basic dashboards in in Google Data Studio and how difficult is it to create forms with with Google Forms is it something that co your colleagues in country offices have been able to learn to do or do you need dedicated uh, people like yourself um, mm -hmm. what would be your advice 
to our innovators? Well, my advice, <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to be an expert on, of software engineering or a data analyst, a bachelor, I don't know, student. Um, you only need to have a good relationship with managing data. Uh, working on Excel is a good start point, um, but it's not like you need a title to work with, uh, with the Google Forms. Google, to do Google Forms is very easy. Also, well, Google Forms are also a ba very basic way of, of, of surveys uh, because there are no applications as uh, Kobo uh, who are a little more advanced, but well, you can learn on the way. Um, actually, I am not a data analyst. Um, I didn't um, went to, to college or to university looking for that in, in my experience. Um, I have worked a lot of with, with data and I'm also an environmental and sanitary engineer, but I like the feel of data and I'm, I'm very good with it. And on, amongst all these years, the, these previous years, I have been working a lot and took in, um, taking courses, uh, short courses that they are available online and also uh, supporting with YouTube. <laughs> a lot of time also, if I have something missing, I can go to YouTube and YouTube have everything to, to improve that, those dashboards and those gaps um, in terms of if you are designing a dashboard or something and you know something is missing, you can consult on, on Google <laughs> to see uh, the answer. And also there are communities uh, in the internet that can also help you on developing and designing these, these dashboards. Thank you, Victor, for, for talking, for Okay, so that was Victor, um, and he coordinates all the UNICEF WASH data in the region um, using the Google e ecosystem. We did talk a bit outside of that recording about, you know, how he would have liked to have some of the, the more powerful features of, of Microsoft Power BI, but they've decided to stay within the Google ecosystem to keep it simple. So they feel that it's just sufficient um, for, for what they're trying to achieve. Um, we just saw Chukuma, but we have Chukuma again, because he was one of the innovators from the, the last cohort who we supported with, with monitoring. Um, when Chukuma started with us, I think it's, it's fair to say that he had, he didn't have monitoring systems in place. So working through the theory of change, et cetera, was, was really helpful for him. Um, this is the sort of system that, that he set up. So first we worked on all the, the tools that need to be created based on his log frame. So we did that in Google Docs. And then we transferred that into Google, into Kobo Toolbox, sorry, in order that the, he could fill it out on the phone and his um, field staff could fill it out on the phone. Um, that, that then automatically goes into Google Sheets and we set up some dashboards in Google Data, in Data Studio. And we have a short video from him just sharing his experience. Okay, Chikuma, thanks a lot for um, for sharing a bit about your experience with, with digital data and dashboards over the past year, um, working with us at the Accelerator. Um, perhaps yeah. you could just start by sort of sharing a bit about why you wanted to set up um, digital systems, like what was the problem you were trying to, to solve? Okay, yeah, uh, thank you so much. Okay, so for us, we were doing um, some good stuff, work around increasing access to toilets for poor households in Nigeria. We were doing that um, through a market participation approach, working directly with um, private sanitation enterprises, who we call toilet business owners. But we noticed that um, we, we had challenges with reporting properly. We had challenges with providing evidence on how our work was um, changing the face of the sanitation market in the communities where we worked. So um, we thought of um, new ways of allowing um, not just our supporters or funders see the work we were doing, but most importantly, to clearly um, show the impact we were making for, 
for you know for future planning programming and also to enhance the work we're doing and so um we we, we i mean with the discussions with the duke university team especially um you christian who we were able to to set up a digital system that allowed us to to capture um real-time information and data on how um tbos were faring in terms of selling sanitation products and also um toilet construction so for us it was about um getting good data faster better uh, in a way that would make sense that would help um, people that mattered or our, our partners to make sense of the work that we were doing and to say it's really been um, interesting since then our work is better and we're getting better results here thank you great so we said it was a it was a kobo toolbox system for the field and then we use google for the dashboards how was your experience with using Kobo for you and your team? Had you used it before? And if not, how did you find it? Was it easy to use? Did it require lots of training? Like, how was how was that experience? Yeah, uh, it was our first time. Um, I know I've seen Kobo one or two times on the internet, but that was our first time. Uh, and, all, and again, for my team also. Um, but it was a good experience. We learned, um, we learned a lot during that period. Um, installing it on our mobile app, and then mobile phones and going to the field eventually to get that data and one of the things i i, I liked or I, I i i enjoyed most about the process is the fact that it's fast it's easy to use and then um, it's easy for record purposes um, and especially the fact that we worked in very remote areas that have challenging with each challenge easy to really we were able to cover houses in short time we were able to um to do to do a lot within a very short time and um, got good responses and he also gave room to it so i think the process was really interesting yeah okay great and what what do you think of the have been sort of the main benefits of having the dashboard so having the data go into a dashboard what have been the the main benefits of that for your organization for us um first it um it, it, it's helping us improve. It's showing clearly how, how much we've grown. It showed that we're at the point where we are getting good data and raising data for planning purposes. But most importantly, it has, it's also helping the sector. Um, one of the biggest challenges we face right now is that there's few data or, or insight into the sanitation market in Nigeria. But with, have, with this data on our having a dashboard on our website, um, a, a, almost everyone can have insights into the level of um, um, demand for sanitation and the, the work, the amazing work private businesses like TBOs are doing right now in Nigeria. And again, it has helped visibility for our work. We, we, we've had plenty of visits on our website. Um, our report, our TBO report has gone very far and um, it, it has really helped us grow and shown that um, we have increased in our capacity to not just collect data, but to make sense of the data in a way that allows for, for better results. Yeah. Okay, Chikuma, thank you. Great, that was Chikuma. So I think, it took, I think that took, we, we did it, I guess you could say casually. So it took probably two, three months to get all those systems set up, um, but now they're automated. So he keeps using them. So it's for reporting like monthly toilet sales or biannual um, surveys of the toilet businesses. So now they're set up, it just keeps updating, which is great. Um, I don't know if it, if, if it fully came across, but I think for Chikuma, one of the main benefits for him actually was it, it added to his sort of organization's credibility because he was able to, to share it with others in the sector and they could see the work that he was already doing, but wasn't getting maybe the sort of recognition for. Um, I'm not going to show this next video, but it was an example from UNICEF in Bangladesh. Um, and they did, they went down the, the Microsoft ecosystem route. Um, they didn't use Kobo um, because they needed more than 10,000 submissions a month. So they had to go to a different um, phone based system called Owner. And um, they didn't use Google because they have, I think they have currently 50, 500,000 data points just for water quality. 
and they found that the the Google system was just lagging um, too much with with that much data. Um, so they went down the Microsoft route, um, and they use a combination of Power BI and and Tableau. This is um, one of the dashboards, and li like from Victor, they use this for for sort of showing who's doing what where in terms of the emergency response in order to that everybody can see who's doing what and where the key gaps are. When we share this um, presentation later, you'd be able to watch the video if you want. So this is Tanvir from the UNICEF office. Tanvir, thank you very much. There we go. And I also have a video which I'll include from UNICEF Colombia. So hopefully, I mean, this the aim of this is to be an introduction so that you can start thinking about what might work for you. You can start having a look online um, and see what you think of the systems. And we can start, if you're interested, talking about them in some of the coaching calls in the future. Um, let's open it up for discussion in a minute. But before we do, just some ideas for ways forwards. So if you see this and you think, you know, this is something that I think would benefit my organization, but I'm not quite sure where to start, or I know where to start, but I'm not quite sure how to get to the finish. Here are some ideas. So you use us while you're with us. Okay. Um, and we can help in terms of trying to find mentors as well, if this is a key thing for you. There's lots of self-learning. Um, so YouTube, Coursera, are just some examples of where you can find lots of information on all these systems. Also, you can hire an expert. So I've used Fiverr and Upwork before. I don't know if you've ever heard of these, but there's lots of sort of uh, digital professionals, as it were, sort of um, consultants that can, that can help you and you can contract them. You put your job up. Fiverr tends to be cheaper and variable quality and Upwork is a bit more expensive um, and higher quality. They're worth checking out. There's, they have big databases of, um, of experts who you can hire and pay by the hour for your, for your organization. And then also check out TechSoup, which is, a, I guess, a nonprofit that helps provide um, technology at uh, reduced rates or free, um, as well as a database of tech experts. Is that a fair summary, Taylor? Leah did it. But anyway, I'd like to open it up to you guys now. Like, where are you at in terms of your your systems, and how are you feeling? Like, does this does this all look good? Are you re raring to go? Are you nervous? Not for you? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. So I think for us um, at Ira, we've we've always done the first two parts quite well. So we've collected data through Google Forms, and then we've kind of started analyzing that data in Google Sheets. But we've never quite made it to that third pillar of kind of visualizing that data more than just the occasional graph in Google Sheets. Um, so yeah, I think for us, we'll kind of first of all figure out how useful that will be, and then kind of figure out which data visualization tool is the best for us, which one we can kind of onboard with the quickest. Um, but yeah, I'm quite excited about that because I like the the tech side of things. So yeah, excited about that. If you know like exactly, if, if you have an idea of how you want dashboards to look and you already have the data, you, things like Upwork can be really helpful because you might pay one, $200 to somebody. And because they're so good at it, it only takes them a couple of hours and you have something that's just automatically updated and working. Anyway, something to think about if, if you don't have the time or the sort of to, to go through the self-learning process. Uh, who next? Um, yep. No, you go first, Emily. Okay. Thank you. Um, I was just going to say that Abundant Water are in a really similar position to Ira. I think we've got the first two steps down quite well, but then end up with just like massive Google Sheets um, or Excel Sheets, sorry, and it's kind of like hard to like find meaning in the data and sift through it. So it would be quite exciting to try and like work on a dashboard and actually be able to visualize the data and get it in real time. And we've got a project coming up in the next couple of months. So it would be, and we'll be collecting baseline data for that. So it'd be 
really good to try and like tweak our current system to then um, improve it for that project. Yep, uh, again, to resonate with the sentiments of Ira, um, I guess we're just one step back again, only because we've now realized about the portal and the opportunities afforded to us by building this product, not just being serviced, but being product oriented. So, but then we working with the team with um, Georgia, Sam and Noah to pull together our m and and we're excited to, to synthesize that into a dashboard. Cool, Chris, you had some good comments in the chat. Oh yeah, I'm kind of like Chris, I, it, it excites me a little bit to see um, what you can do with the data. Um, yeah, like as Emily said, we collect it um, quite well already. Um, maybe we can improve like how we store the data and then yeah, also how we, um, how we extract it, how we find it, um, and then yeah, how we visualize it would be um, some changes we could probably make in our space. I think it's always helpful to use the like the theory of change to go back to the theory of change when thinking about how you can like what you can extract from your data. It's always hard to start with a big file, and you're sort of thinking on what can I what can I get from this? And you're kind of going through it, trying to find, you know, what you can pull out. And we do that a lot. Um, sometimes it's helpful. The theory of change helps us to kind of give a, a bit of focus. Yeah, so has, has anyone here had a go at making sort of dashboards, say, themselves? Has anyone had a sort of a play in Google Data Studio or something? Oh, I did Power BI, uh, not the greatest. So I'm going to Data Studio now. <laughs> How was your experience, Thomas? How did you find it? Oh, uh, it's really power. It is, I love pivot tables and I love Excel, but it's just, if I'm, yeah, I'm just, but because I use Google Sheets, I didn't know Google Data Studio existed. I get Google Sheets, change that to Excel, and then I would turn into Power BI. But now that I know Google, Data Studio is more intuitive and it's already using the same vendor. I think I'll find out and I'll let you know the coaching call. <laughs> Katrina from um, to, to her, I get she uses Excel a lot. She finds it, it it's what she really likes it. Um, so they use Power BI for everything there. So variations within the organization. Yes, uh, for me, I used to use a Google Form, Google Sheet, and a little bit have an experience with the Google Studio when I was in the university, but with our team now, we used to use an Excel sheet for a data collection. So it's like a Google Form, Excel sheet that we don't do uh, any visualization. Yeah, so only Google Form and Excel. So all the people that um, I reached out to in UNICEF before today were really excited to hear that some of you are interested in this. Um, so if, you know, if there is a specific technology that people are interested in, um, some of them have offered to do a session specifically on that or to potentially work one-on-one -on -one in the future. So I think that would be that would be great. So just something to think about and make the most of while you're with us. Anyone else? Otherwise, I'll, I'll pass it to you, Taylor. Uh, can I ask a question? How we can join that one you just said no? Good question. So, yeah. so the, the Google one with your Google account, you can automatically just kind of go into, but it's not necessarily 
easy to find it unless you you Google it. So if you Google, I'll send the links in the chat actually, so that people can can do that. So later while while Taylor's talking, I'll send you the links for where you can log in. Power BI is a little bit more complicated to get set up. Um, so if people are interested in that, I could point you to a like a walkthrough video, or we could just have a like a a twenty minute chat at some point. Yeah, and I'll put that in Slack so that it's not lost when the meeting ends. Thanks, everyone. Taylor, we can't hear you for some reason. I'm not sure why. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, so weird. All right, well, thank you. Anyway, um, take advantage of, of Christian especially here. Um, you know, set up some office hours with him. He'll walk you through all of these systems, help you think through what's best for you, you know, connecting your theory of change with these things. Um, he's an incredible asset and resource. Um, so really, really take advantage of that. Um, can everybody see my screen? Yeah, excellent. Yep. All right, so here's just a, a quick reminder on some deadlines. So, you know, by our next coaching call, we want to have at least one scaling canvas and your SWOT analysis ready to review. So that's your upcoming coaching calls. I believe they start next week or the week after. We also need your draft capacity building plans by that coaching call. So that is coaching call six. So draft capacity building plans, which will include that SWOT analysis and your scaling canvas. Um, we will, before coaching call seven, which Leah is in the process of setting up with you all, um, we'll have you revise that working draft. And then we're gonna give you a little bit more time and have your final capacity building, uh, capacity building plan drafts due two weeks after that coaching call seven. So it'll all kind of culminate at the end of November. And then for the rest of the week, here's what we've got on deck. Um, it's all in your calendars. So we will see you all again tomorrow and um, hope that you've enjoyed the things that we did this morning. And there's more, more to come for the rest of the week. The pitch event is coming together really, really well. Your pitches were fantastic. Um, we've got it all together. The event's gonna 